Lesson 21, Scientific Notation, and Two Statements of Equality. Hopefully this scientific notation portion of this lesson is reviewed for us. All right, we know that in scientific notation, um, we always put the decimal after the first non-zero digit. Uh, the exponent tells us how many places the decimal was removed from its original position. All right, in these types of problems, we are going to be dealing with numbers that are already in scientific notation and putting them in correct scientific notation. All right, so I'm going to write an example problem on the board, and we're going to work through it. Um, I'm going to let you know of a few things to make note of that will make this hopefully a little bit easier for you. All right, so the example is 0 0.003 times 10 to the negative 6 times 4,000 over 0 0.006 times 10 to the 15th times 2,000 times 10 to the 4th. All right, keep in mind that in scientific notation, the decimal goes after the first non-zero digit. All right, in this particular example problem, you will notice that the decimal place is not in the correct spot, so we are going to have to move it. We're going to have to do some rearranging. All right, and here's a couple little things that will help you in doing so. All right, when a number is already in scientific notation, and you're putting it into proper scientific notation, if you move the decimal to the right, you're going to subtract that number from the exponent. All right, so the decimal moves right. You're going to subtract that number from the exponent. And if the decimal moves left, you're going to add that number to the exponent. All right, for example, let's deal with 0 0.003 times 10 to the negative 6. The decimal needs to go after the first non-zero digit, which is after the 3. To do that, we move it one, two, three places. Now, it was already in scientific notation. We moved it three places to the right, so we are subtracting that number from the exponent negative six. So we have negative six minus three, which gives us our new exponent of negative nine. So we now have three times 10 to the ninth, negative ninth, excuse me. All right, we subtracted three because we moved it three places from the exponent, negative six. All right, four times 1,000, all right, our decimal is after the last zero, and scientific notation needs to be after the four. So that was one, two, three places. We moved it three places right, or excuse me, three places to the left. So our new decimal, or our new exponent is gonna be four times 10 to the third, because zero plus three is three. All right, that is, that is the top numbers in correct scientific notation. Now let's look at the bottom numbers. In order to be in correct scientific notation, the decimal needs to go after the first non-zero digit. In this case, it's six. So from its original position, it will have moved one, two, three places to the right, which means we are taking our exponent, 15, and we're subtracting three because we moved it three places to the right. So our new exponent is going to be 12. So now we have 6 times 10 to the 12th. All right, in the next number, our decimal needs to go after the 2. It is currently after the 0, which means we move it 1, 2, 3 places to the left. So we're adding 3 to the exponent. So we now have 2 times 10 to the well, 4 plus 3 is 7, so it would be 2 times 10 to the 7th. All right, now that the numbers are in proper scientific notation, we need to solve. All right? When we solve, we do base times base and exponent plus exponent. And we do that for the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we have 3 
and 4, those are our bases, so 3 times 4 is 12. And then we add the exponents, negative 9 plus 3. Well, negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. So we now have 12 times 10 to the negative 6. We're going to do the same thing in the denominator, base times base, 6 times 2, which is 12. And we're going to add the exponent, 12 plus 7. 12 plus 7 is 19. Last part is to divide. All right, when we divide, we divide bases and subtract the exponents. Twelve divided by twelve is one. And if we subtract the exponents, we have negative six minus nineteen, which gives us negative twenty-five. And that is the final answer. One times ten to the negative twenty-fifth. All right. So these are the steps that you follow. You put it in correct scientific notation. You multiply base times base, exponent plus exponent, and then finally you divide the bases and subtract your exponents for your final solution. All right, I'm going to have you try one example on your own. Um, this will take some getting used to, uh, but you just need to follow those steps. All right, we have 0 .0003 0 times 10 to the 8 times 6,000. over 0 0.006 times 10 to the 15th times 2,000 times 10 to the 5th. All right, go ahead and try that one on your own. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video and you're ready to move on, hit play. All right, the next thing we're going to be doing is called statements of equality problems. All right, so we're just going to do two examples, and I'm going to have you try two on your own. All right, the first one says the ratio of two numbers is 3 to 4, and their sum is 84. What are the numbers? You could set up a ratio box for this, um, but I'm just, we're going to um, set up let statements and solve that way. All right, so we don't know what the two numbers are. We know they're different numbers, so we have to call them by different things. So I'm going to let x equal the first number and y equal the second number. All right, now the ratio of those two numbers is 3 to 4. So the ratio of x to y is 3 to 4. Okay? What is it called when we have two ratios that equal to each other? It's called a proportion. They're set equal, and to solve the proportion, we cross multiply and divide. So if I cross multiply, I have 4x equals 3y. Now to set up our second equation, we know that their sum is 84. Okay, sum is addition, so that means that x plus y is going to be equal to 84. All right, note now, we had two unknowns, which means we have two equations, and we do have two equations set up. 4x equals 3y, and x plus y equals 84. This comes back to substitution or elimination. All right, in this particular problem, I'm going to choose substitution. I'm going to eliminate, or I'm going to um, isolate the x variable. So I'm going to have x is equal to 84 minus y. So back in my first equation, wherever I see x, I'm going to substitute in 84 minus y. So I now have 4 times 84 minus y equals 3y. Okay, go ahead and distribute. All right, 4 times 84. 336. So we have 336 minus 4y equals 3y. I'm going to add 4y to both sides, which equals 7y. All right, and if I divide, y is going to be equal to, let's see, 
right? Y is equal to 48. And then to solve for X, you can substitute it into any equation. I'm going to plug it back into this one, 84 minus 48. And that is going to give me X is equal to 36. Okay, and we have to solve for the two numbers. To check, put them back into their ratio. The ratio of two numbers was 3 to 4. All right, so X is 36, Y is 48. They should reduce down to 3 over 4. 12 goes into 36 three times. 12 goes into 48 four times. They do indeed reduce to 3 over 4, so those are the correct numbers. All right, so you're setting up a ratio of the two numbers. That's going to be one equation. And you're adding the two numbers. That's going to be your second equation. All right, for the next type of problem, we have the sum of two numbers is 128, and their difference is 44. Again, we don't know what those two numbers are, so we're going to call them by two different things. All right, we're going to let x equal the first number and let y equal the second number. Now we know that the sum is 128. So x plus y is equal to 128. And we know their difference is 44. A okay, difference implies subtraction. So we have x minus y equals 44. Keep in mind, we have two unknowns and we have two equations. Right? This, these equations are set up nicely for elimination. Okay, notice your y variables already have the same coefficient. They already have opposite signs. All right, so x plus x is 2x. The y's cancel. 128 plus 44 will equal to 172. And then divide by 2 to give us x. And x is going to be equal to 86. Once we know what x is, we can substitute it into either equation to solve for y. All right, and when you solve, y is going to be equal to 42. Those are the two numbers. And again, keep in mind, we had two equations with two unknowns, two solutions. All right. These next two examples are very similar. I want you to go ahead and try them on your own. The first one is the ratio problem. You need to set up the ratio as one equation and set up the sum as the second equation. And the second problem is very similar to the ones we just finished. One equation is going to deal with sum. One equation is going to deal with difference. Go ahead and try those two on your own, and we will check them when we come back to class.